Welcome to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer, a full show of tips and practical strategies to repair, rebuild, and strengthen your relationship. If you are currently stuck, wondering if your marriage can be saved, or you know you want to save it but don't know how to go about changing it, this show is for you. To book your free marriage strategy session with Nicola, get the free marriage ebook or donate. If you are enjoying the show and want to help keep it flowing, visit www.nicolabeer.com. Hi and welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm going to be talking about a topic today that can be quite sensitive. That's open marriages because open marriages are something that I'm working more and more with, with people all around the world, mainly people in the US, the UK, as well as in the Middle East and Australia. This is where most of the people seem to find my podcast and reach out to me. Just a very quick announcement before I get started is that I have created for my listeners a YouTube channel. It has around 100 videos on it so far. They're all about five to seven minutes each on improving relationships, overcoming affairs, feeling more self-confident, self-loving actions, how to deal with anxiety and depression. These are the topics that I've been covering so far. I would love you to subscribe to that show, my YouTube channel. I'm going to put the link along with this episode as you may find getting tips there more convenient or something new, as well as just sort of listening to my voice. So that is available free of charge for you as well. So Open Marriages. In 1972, a book titled Open Marriage was released and was considered the first of its kind to mention a marriage setup that is different to a traditional marriage it became a bestseller that sold over 35 million copies worldwide. This book discusses the concept of open marriages and how sexual relationships outside of the marriage can be a healthy thing. So what exactly is an open marriage? Well, the term open marriage can be described in several different ways, but it is most commonly known as a polyamorous marriage. A polyamorous marriage is where a married couple consider their marriage as the main relationship, but there is a certain level of non-exclusivity where either one or both married partners may date or have sexual relationships with other people. It is a mutual agreement on both parts, so this is totally different to having an affair, cheating or committing adultery. The mutual agreement requires both married partners to openly discuss and agree what their open marriage looks like. Some may have requirements that include no emotions to be involved and the outside relationship should be purely sexual. Others might be happy with their current married sexual life and only allow their partner to have emotional dates. The extramarital relationships can include a range of partners or just one particular person However, the married couple will set rules on what their open marriage involves. This way, nothing is done maliciously or in secret and both spouses feel valued. Whatever the case of the extramarital activity, the general consensus is is that an open marriage means that in the current marriage, both spouses will remain the top priority and the outside relationships will always come secondary to this so it really is about deciding together if one of you or both of you want an open marriage and setting some boundaries agreeing on what the rules are and this is something that comes up quite a lot with the sessions that I'm running where one person wants an open marriage to save their relationship and they feel that They're going to leave their husband or wife because they're not sexually satisfied or they're not emotionally satisfied and so, or they're just not satisfied for whatever reason. And so then they're sharing, please, can we have an open marriage? And then the, the husband or wife will say to me, Nicola, do I accept this? I really don't want my marriage to end. I don't want to get divorced, but I'm not sure I feel comfortable with this. And This is something that I work through with individuals, sometimes with couples, setting the boundaries. And I would say that if in your heart and your body, 
it's saying no, then it's important to listen to our gut and to our heart. Because when people override the body and don't listen to themselves, this is when people get really unhappy. The body never lies. It shows us the truth. So this is definitely something to consider. Now, there is some confusion around open marriages, as there are some religions where there is marriage setups that are different to what a traditional marriage looks like. For example, a man being able and allowed to have multiple wives. So this is common in the Middle East. I've been living in the Middle East now for 14 years. And in some religions, in some countries, there are men who marry one, two, three, four women. And the reason that this is different, and they do have their own challenges, and I do work with second marriages and third marriages, and I work with men who have got multiple wives and they are unsure how to control and and manage the relationships in a healthy way. I've also worked with women who have discovered that they're now one of two wives or one of three wives. And I've also worked with women who are the second wives and they're trying to have a closer relationship with their husband. So there is lots of different complexities with that. So if that's your situation right now and you're involved in a relationship where there is multiple wives feel free to reach out to me if if you're needing any support what I'm talking about today is different open marriages there is only one marriage a polygamous marriage is where one spouse is married to different people an open marriage is purely a married couple who have mutually agreed to partake in activities or relationships whether sexual or emotional with other partners And there is only ever one marriage. And the relationship takes priority. The marriage takes priority. Now, I just want to say it's really important to remember that if you're having current problems in your marriages right now, it's not easy to assume that an open marriage will just solve things. In fact, it can often make it more difficult, more challenging, and build even more barriers between you as a couple. If there are things about your husband or wife that you're not happy with, It doesn't mean that you can just seek this in another person outside of the marriage with your husband's or wife's consent. The priority should be on having a great relationship with your spouse first and then exploring open marriages. You need to be having great communication between you. You need to feel secure. You need to feel that you can trust one another because if you can't trust one another, then how on earth are you going to trust each other in an open relationship? You need to feel that connection and that communication. And that's definitely something that I go through with couples that are struggling in their marriage. Either way, whether they're having an open marriage or whether they're not going to have an open marriage, it's essential to always build the foundations of a great relationship, which is actions that rebuild connection, clearing negativity, clearing resentment and great communication. And this is something that I take all couples through. An open marriage has to have a strong level of trust, a strong level of open communication, communication where not what someone doesn't get angry, someone doesn't give them the silent treatment. If you can't and you don't have this, an open marriage is going to be really challenging, in my experience, working with a lot of couples, because you need to be able to express your wants, your desires and your feelings to one another. Some couples in open marriages find it easy to write down a list of things that they would like, a list of things that they are willing to be flexible on, and lastly, a list of things that they will not tolerate in an open marriage. This way, both parties are aware of what is expected of them. This conversation could include the potential outcomes to extramarital relationships, including how to practice safe sex to avoid any chance of someone falling pregnant or getting sexually related diseases. It's very important to make sure that sexual health is discussed and agreed upon. Some people will go and get tested on a regular basis to keep their open marriage flowing, which isn't very romantic, but that's generally what can happen. And I've also had couples that discuss other aspects of open relationships, like how much time do they spend in their open relationship? How much time are they allowed to spend with another person 
as an individual. How many times are able to go on a date with the same person or does it need to be a different person each time? I had one couple that came to me for divorce support, divorce counselling and coaching. And I worked with them to reach a peaceful agreement when it came to their divorce and how to support their children through divorce. And three years before they came to see me, they agreed on an open marriage. They agreed that they could have sexual relationships outside of the relationships and dates with those sexual relationships. So they could take someone out on a date and have sex with them and that was what they were allowed to do. However, the reason that the marriage broke down was because the husband had taken the person that he had an extra relationship with on holiday with him. And this was unacceptable to the wife. Not only was it unacceptable that he took this other person on a holiday... What he also did was he took this other person on a holiday with his children. So this was a deal breaker for the the lady that went through that. So it's very important to actually have these discussions. Because if you're having an open marriage to save your marriage, which I definitely recommend thinking about in a lot of detail before you say yes to this because it's a lot of things to consider if you're doing it to save your marriage then you want to be really clear on what the deal breakers are because an open marriage is such a delicate situation you're expanding your sexual and emotional connections with others outside and it requires time it requires outlining all the possible scenarios and it also requires continuous open flowing communication. Now sometimes people will say you can have an open marriage or we can have an open marriage. I don't want to hear anything about it. Maybe that's living in ignorance but that's what some people really want. So these things need to be discussed. Other people they want to know everything. They really want to be part of knowing everything about their partner's extramarital relationships. And as with any relationship, an open marriage can evolve and change. And so it's important to not just have the discussion at the beginning, but to have regular discussions on how these new relationships are developing, how your relationship is developing. Are you becoming closer? Are you becoming further apart? Is it increasing the passion? Is your sex life improving? Is your sex life getting worse? Is your passion getting worse? These are things that uh, are needed to be considered. And... I've worked with a few other cases where an open marriage has actually worked very well for couples. So, I mean, my personal opinion on open marriages is that I'm not here to judge. If a couple or an individual want to talk through it with me and need some support and some guidance, then I'd be happy to take them through it, happy to discuss what needs to be considered. Ultimately, I'm not going to suggest one way or the other. I'm completely neutral. I have seen open marriages where it's really supported a couple. Where, for example, a man decided that he didn't want sex anymore. He loved his wife. They had great dreams to grow old together. To raise their grandchildren together. To travel the world. To always be together and to keep that family unit for their children and for their grandchildren. Yet he didn't want to have sex anymore. And his wife, she was young, active, and wanted to continue having sexual relationships. Now, I say young, she was only actually seven years younger than him. But she didn't want to live the rest of her life not having sex ever again. Or having sex with her husband where she felt like it was pity sex where he wasn't really into it so she decided to approach the subject of an open marriage with him and he said absolutely I'm fine with it I don't want to know about it but you have my full permission to go and have other relationships that fulfill you I want us to stay together as they were so emotionally connected I've had another couple that I have seen at work where The wife decided that she was going through a lot. She had been through a lot. 
with anxiety, with depression, and I was helping her to calm and change those. And she just didn't feel like she wanted to open her body during the time where we were going through a lot of therapy to support her with her husband. She didn't want her husband to have an affair. And so she said to him that they could have an open relationship, that he could have sex with different people as long as there was no dating involved, no emotional connection, then she was okay with that. And that seemed to work for them. Other couples, it's been an absolute disaster. One person has said, okay, I will have an open marriage just to try and keep you. And then they felt even more hurt, even more ugly, even more insecure, even more like a failure. Their self-confidence is shot down. They're in pain. They're stressed. And it, it's, it's really affected somebody's happiness and, and health. So it's very, very important to both be on the same page. And if this is something, of course, you can't share with your family. It's difficult to share with friends. Everybody's got their own judgments or own opinions on it. And so working with somebody who can support you to make the right decisions for you is very beneficial. So if you're listening to this and you would like to explore getting some one-to-one support or some couple support or wanting just to even curious to know a bit more about it, then feel free to contact me at my website, nicolabeer.com, as I will happily have a 15-20 minute conversation with you and then you can decide, do you want to invest in some one-to-one coaching and relationship counselling in this area? I'm also going to be creating a few YouTube videos on open marriages so do to subscribe to my show you can put into youtube nicola beer relationships or you can just copy the link along with this episode i'm going to cover the pros and cons of open relationships coming up very soon from my heart to yours i wish you a wonderful week ahead thanks for tuning in bye thank you for listening to how to save your marriage with nicola beer To book your free marriage strategy session today, you can visit www.nicolabeer.com where you can also get the free marriage fixing ebook, request a topic for the show and make a donation if the show has been of benefit to you and you want to help keep it going. We wish you an amazing love-filled day ahead.